Go I'm Rebecca Velasquez. I'm a holistic psychotherapist and yoga and meditation teacher. I've got Bill O'Haran back with me, for who is my spiritual mentor, dear friend of mine for 15 years. And we just spontaneously wanted to do a quick video podcast on meditation. Yes. So I'll let Bill start with that. We are right. both teachers. You, of Rebecca. It, it's um, it's my, one of my favorite topics. And the reason it is, is because it's kind of a misunderstood exercise. I get the question, I don't know, 30 times a month, 40 times a month, Bill, how do I meditate? Oh, I heard meditation is good. Oh, I have an app and I'm meditating. Am I doing it the right way? And all I want to share is that there is no right way or wrong way to meditate. It's the most powerful thing a human being can do. And I say that because this isn't me saying it. It's the most ancient practice. You, you look at any history books. I'm talking about ancient history, 20, 30,000, 40, 50,000, 60,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago, the shamans, the ancient cultures all had sacred places. And what were they doing? They were going quiet, going into the caves, those caves in France, the caves here in America, the Native Americans, they all were going to a quiet, dark place. And they were slowing their minds down and just letting the heart open up. That is meditation. What you, all you have to do, there's no, there's no specific methodology. All you have to do is find a cushion or a chair in a place that's quiet, dim the lights, put your back straight, and just sit. No, no, I gotta do something, no, no, no. Just sit, what am I doing right now? Um, listening to my heart. You can have all these thoughts. Oh my God, what do I need to do? I gotta drop off the kids, I got that part, I got all these things I gotta do, right? Good, all right, come back and just sit. And if you do that, five minutes one day, six minutes one day, this is a guarantee. This isn't even a God, it may be happening, this is a guarantee. If you sit long enough and just listen to your feelings and listen to all those crazy thoughts, at some point, there's a powerful emotion and memory that's going to pop up, and it's been waiting to pop up. And, it, and when that happens, your job is to stay with it and actually let that experience come up in its fullest bouquet. That is meditation. What happened a year from now, a month from now, an hour from now, I don't know. But all you have to do is sit. The greatest mathematician of all time, Pascal, said, Humanity's biggest problem is people aren't willing to sit in a room by themselves quietly. They're not willing to sit in a room by themselves quietly. He's right. Look at all the things people are doing right now. They're eating, they're drinking, they're watching TV, they're on the phone, they're doing a thousand different things, avoiding the very thing that will change their life. And that is this. And people are like, that can't work. That can't work. How can that do anything? It's going to do everything. The problem is we have to wait. We're not good at waiting. We need to let the emotions come up. And another money back guarantee that eight year old inside of you that's been waiting to express that emotion of joy, sadness, longing, whatever it is, he or she's going to come up and you're, you're going to be like, whoa, that was a memory from third grade. That makes no sense. That is out of time and out of place. Bingo. That's the beginning. I'm pretty passionate about it, as you can tell. Absolutely. And I was just thinking, Bill, that so many people, especially my clients, I'll notice them saying, you know, we'll start to, they'll start to meditate for a little bit and they'll say, oh, Rebecca, I'm too busy. You know, stuff has come up. And really at the same time, what's coming up is traumas, uncomfortable feelings. They're sitting long enough for this stuff to come up. Having a mentor, having, you know, people that you yes. can talk to about meditation, having a journal to process feelings so important absolutely and and there will be a hundred percent so there's so many folks that i know young and old that i keep pushing a little bit to sit 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 and having a having resources absolutely what i'll also say is if you're nervous about starting because you don't feel like you have the resources i understand that i don't i wouldn't begrudge that what i'm saying is i also am saying is that if you start now, you'd be surprised at what shows up when you start to meditate, i.e. somebody will come into your life. They call it serendipity, whatever you want to call it. I'm not getting new agey, not getting airy-fairy. I can't afford to be airy-fairy. I've got three kids, two in college, all that kind of stuff. I promise that if you trust the fact that if you sit and let your emotions come up, there's an intelligence that you're, if something <clears throat> powerful happens, <clears throat> something's going to show up pretty darn quickly to help you with that. You're going to see an ad. You're going to see somebody. They're going to start talking about, gosh, I was just thinking I need to do, I need to see a therapist. I, I need to start working out. I, I need to change my diet. And this diet commercial came on. It's not a miracle. It's just the way it works. And a rational mind doesn't believe 
that our non-physical emotional feeling world has intelligence. You know, there, there's this ancient battle, great book, everybody needs to read it, Far Journeys, Robert Monroe. It's talking about the battle between the left and the right, left brainers, right brainers, and just the left brain, left brain and the right brain inside ourselves. Our rational mind, ask your rational mind what love is. Oh, it's a, a rational mind doesn't know. Love's an experience. Love's an experience. Life's an experience. It's a feeling. Life's a feeling, not a thought. And we're letting our thought world drive our world. We got to bring our, let our feeling world start driving. How do you start? Meditate, sitting quietly. Medito. <clears throat> sitting quietly. Anyway, that's my Thank take. You. I so appreciate it. So <laughs> Phil O'Hearn is an, a licensed clinical social worker as well. You've been in the financial field for about 30 years. Yeah, crazy, right? <clears throat> still in. It's good stuff. Still, still are. So you're not. Uh, we'll have my website available good. soon. Um, and um, this is great. Thanks so much for, for allowing me to, to share some thoughts with you. Absolutely. It. I'm so grateful to have you, Bill. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Take and care. My website, Rebecca R. Velasquez, YouTube, Facebook, Rebecca R. Velasquez. Thank you. Awesome.